So the, the workshop we had today was organised by me, Stephen Belcher from the Met Office, James Screen from Exeter University and also Brian Hoskins from Imperial College, but Brian had to leave early, that's why he's not with us now. So just to remind you what we did, and I know a lot of you know this, but let me just remind you. So what we did was we brought together uh, members of staff from the science areas in the Met Office together with our academic partners across the UK. And the reason we got them together was to discuss the run of unusual seasons we've had in UK weather. So we took as our starting point for the discussion the winter of 2010-11, which was particularly cold, the summer 2012, which was a stinker and totally wet, and then the spring of 2013, which was unusually cold. Now it's important to emphasise that none of these events in themselves are unprecedented. So we've, we heard today in the discussions about um, other seasons in the recent past that looked like these, or maybe even going back into the 19th century. But we did think that taken together, it was enough to alert me as the head of the Hadley Centre that we really ought to be thinking about this and uh, trying to understand where something, whether something has changed. So before talking about what we found, let me just um, say that, of course, we're in the UK, so what delivers our weather is the jet stream. So the jet stream is a stream of air at 10 kilometres uh, altitude that comes across the Atlantic, and that delivers the weather systems that, that we get in the UK. The jet stream can stick in two positions. It can either stick over Iceland, and in that case the weather systems go over Iceland and it leaves the UK cold and dry during the winter or warm or even hot in the summer or it can stick in a more southerly position over the UK and this is if that happens in the summer that's what gives us our wet summer so really scientifically the workshop was all about trying to understand what um, what gives us the position of the jet stream but it is a random process there's a large random element to it but there are some sort of contributors that can load the dice. So it's really the loadings of the dice that we were discussing. So if I start by um, giving you a, a kind of brief view of what we, what we discussed on summer 2012, so the wet summer last year. So what we found there was some really exciting new work that's been done at the University of Reading by Rowan Sutton and his collaborators that was showing that there are really slowly evolving patterns uh, of circulation or currents in the Atlantic Ocean and those currents carry warm and cold water to different positions in the Atlantic and those areas of warm and cold water can then affect the atmosphere and uh, load the dice as to whether the jet stream is over the UK or over Iceland. The exciting thing is that what we now see is that this, this circulation or this, this change by the North Atlantic evolves on a 10 or 20 year cycle and so maybe this is one of the reasons why we've had such a long run so six of the last seven summers have been wetter than average for example so i think that's really new exciting finding that we found today and we've got some other things we can do to build on that work the cold winters is is a, seems like it's a much more complicated beast so there's a lot of randomness about where the jet stream sticks and there's a basket of things, if I'm mixing my metaphors, my apologies, a basket of things that can load the dice as to whether it's in its northerly position or its southerly position over us. So one is the El Nino. So this is the pattern of sea surface temperatures in the Pacific, and that can connect to the jet stream, whether it sits over us. The second is solar variability. So whether we're on where we are on the 11-year solar cycle, whether we're in the solar minimum or the maximum, that can affect the upper atmosphere, which can burrow down to the surface and affect jet stream. There are things in the Atlantic Ocean, there are processes high up, and there's also a, a thing that's been talked about in the scientific literature a lot recently, which is as um, Arctic sea ice retreats, as more Arctic sea ice melts, can that affect the position of the jet stream? And James is really the expert uh, on that area, particularly. So that's broadly what we talked about. So. What do we think we need to do next? Well, it was a scientific discussion, and so we think that there are, these are really some cutting-edge science questions to be addressed here. No one in the world is able to answer these questions. It's really important to emphasise. So one of the things that I've talked a lot about is the role of the ocean having an imprint on the atmosphere and setting the jet stream. So we think that the way the ocean and the atmosphere communicate heat sounds a bit vague, I know, but that, that, we're not sure we understand that fully, and there are things going on 
um, uh, near the Gulf Stream that, that, that we need to understand better, to understand that heat exchange. There are things happening high up in the atmosphere in the stratosphere, so this is above 10 kilometers, and that can mediate what's happening in the Pacific to what's happening uh, on the jet stream, so are we getting that right? And then third is the role of greenhouse gas emissions and climate change on these factors that are loading the dice. So that's also obviously a very big topic that we want to get into. So I don't know if that was a short introduction, but that was, that's an introduction, I hope, anyway. <laughs>